Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about how technology changes jobs. Now this is going to be kind of a companion video to a couple videos I did before and they're linked below. It's called uh, Industry Changes and Artificial Intelligence because it's sort of an extension to those and I'm going to refer to some stories I tell in those. Uh, so you may want to watch them so you understand the references I gave in this video because I don't want to be too repetitive. I know I've been told I'm repetitive repeatedly, but I'm trying to avoid that. Anyway, this is kind of directed to people who think AI is going to be replacing everybody and there will be no work available. And I'm on record as saying I don't think that's going to happen. And the point of view I'm coming from is not only from somebody who studied artificial intelligence at the graduate level, got a master's degree in it, was working on a PhD in it, but it's somebody who was then in a computer field for over 40 years and saw how changes affected that industry. So I'm just going to go on record by saying I don't think that AI is going to displace, displace people out of the industry or out of a lot of industries. I do think it will change jobs. And I'm going to talk about that because I think basically what I think will happen in a nutshell is some old jobs will disappear, but they'll be replaced or transmuted into new jobs, which will be new opportunities. And I'll talk about that. So one of the videos I linked below, I think it's the industry change one. I talk about my blacksmith neighbor that when I was a young kid, when I was a late teens, maybe 20 at the absolute oldest, I used to talk to a neighbor of mine who had moved to Alexandria, Virginia, which is where we were, to become a blacksmith. He was a, a blacksmith apprentice. And then cars came in to play and displaced horses over a few years. And his job disappeared. Not just his, but almost anyone having to do with horses. So breeders, you know, not he was a blacksmith, but, you know, horseshoes, bridles, saddles, stables, breeders, just those were all gone because horses were not needed very much. And most of you are like, mm, I don't really care about that. Well, you just don't care about it because it happened before you were born. But it displaced a lot of people because it was a revolution. It was a complete revolution in how this country operated. And all those people had to get jobs somewhere else. You, you know, you, you may have had this successful horse farm. People don't want horses anymore. What are you going to do? So now that was 100 years ago. So let's move forward a bit. Um, my parents had jobs when secretaries, most, almost every executive had a secretary. A lot of groups, like if you worked in an R&D group or you worked in a, you know, a, a, I can't even think of it. There were these, all these departmental divisions. Most of those groups had a secretary assigned. And sometimes what they, what big companies did is they had something called a typing pool. And all this existed for basically one reason. If you wanted a report typed up, because typewriters were manual, required you to be really good at it, to not make mistakes, and also to type quickly, they would hire people, mostly women. But I, I knew of at least one company that there was a guy in the typing pool. Um, and they would do typing. And that was a big chunk. Most secretaries' jobs, a big chunk of their job was typing. Yeah, they answered phone calls. Yeah, they managed appointment schedules, but a huge chunk of their work was typing. Well, guess what? When I turned 14, I got a home computer. One of the very first programs on that home computer, my Atari 800, was a word processing piece of software. I started using it in high school. And in fact, my junior year, there was a required class for typing. I mean, my God, this was 1982. And I convinced them to let me replace it with my computer science class, which was being taught that year for the very first time on Atari 800s. I basically knew everything in it. I basically ignored the class, but I got my typing um, requirement brushed aside. By the way, to this day, I'm still not a very good typist. Oops. By the time I got to college, everything I did was word processing. I was really good at it. I had mastered the program. I had, had a, set up a, uh, I had a dot matrix printer that I could set to overprint, which it would print once, and then it would print again offset. So it looked like a laser jet printer, which I couldn't afford at the time. 
I was doing all my papers that way. I had a roommate who started doing his papers that way. I had a teacher, a professor in college who didn't allow dot matrix uh, papers. I submitted mine with the offset printing and she never knew. Anyway, why am I getting at this? Because secretaries have never been a big thing since I got into the workforce. Maybe an executor would have a secretary. Maybe there'd be a secretary for a whole group of administration. Like maybe all the VPs would share a secretary. But for the most part, we did our own typing. We did our own word processing. It just, it wasn't a thing anymore. I didn't see people lamenting, oh my God, secretaries are being displaced by word processors. At least I don't remember anyone ever saying that. But a huge chunk of the workforce got displaced. By the way, this has never stopped. Digital cameras became a big thing. Suddenly all these film processing places, you couldn't drive a block or two without passing a film processing place or even one of those little photo booths. They had these little tiny booths where you drive up, give them your film and you come back the next day and pick up your pictures, gone. Um, whenever I get a crown or some people call them caps, a replacement top of your tooth, used to be I'd get a temporary and come back in two weeks to get the, the real one. Now they print them right there in the office. Like it, you don't want, they, they put in, they, they measure your tooth. Then they, while they cut it out and all that, it's printing a new one for me. By the way, um, 3d printing is doing that with everything. 3d printing is replacing a lot of things. I was watching a video. Jay Leno keeps a lot of, uh, antique cars in his enormous garage. And he has a metal 3d printer that he uses to print pieces for cars that haven't been made for 80 years. There is no manufacturers for these, and you can't even find them in junkyards anymore. He just takes the old piece, scans it, and the three, a metal 3D printer creates a new one for him. Record shops are nearly gone. Yes, there are a few left for vinyl enthusiasts, but most people don't buy music anymore on vinyl or CD or anything. They buy it digitally. Um, I talked in one of my videos about how 2D artists thought they were going to be replaced when 3D art became a thing in video games. And they weren't displaced. Instead of becoming the main artists on the game, they still had jobs as texture artists, as UI artists, as concept artists. So they were still needed, just in a different way. And I pointed out in that video, and I'll point out in this one, there are more 2D artists in working in the game industry today than there were 2D artists back in the 90s working in the industry because the industry is so much bigger. 3D and the ability to make games and engines and just the industry exploded has made more opportunity for 2D artists than there ever were back when games were 2D. Um, if you think this has ended, if this is, well, those are behind us and AI is different. I see electric cars. I see solar power. I see 3D printing that I just mentioned. I just mentioned. Those are just getting off the ground. Those are gonna change the way our society works. You can have a house off the grid. You can have a 3D printer in your house. Maybe it makes your clothes. Maybe it makes household goods you need. Who knows? Your electric car, you never need to go to a gas station again. I already have that. My car just sits in the garage charging up. And then when I need it, it's always at 100%. Some jobs associated with the old way of doing those things are going to go away. But new ones are going to open up. It's just the way things work. And I think that's the way it's going to work with AI. People will still be needed. They're just being needed in a new way. Now, this is hard to predict. It, historically, it's always been hard to predict how technology is going to change jobs. I will attempt to do so. I think we're going to see bigger, more complex games made by smaller teams because AI will let them do some things that previously required large teams or specialist people on those teams. By the way, for all of you who think this is a bad thing, it's an opportunity. This is an opportunity. You'll be able to make, as a small indie developer, things that right now can only be made by huge publishers with hundreds of people on the team, if not thousands. So this is an opportunity, I think, that's coming down the pipe. So I just wanted to say, that's my prediction. The jobs are still going to be there. I think they'll just be slightly different jobs. So here's my challenge I'm going to throw out. Let's see how well this video ages. Let's come back to it in five or 10 years and see if the game industry is all AI now and nobody's got jobs there anymore, or if there are just as many jobs, if not more, but they're different than they were before, because that's my prediction. Some of you are going to come back in five or 10 years and maybe you'll be saying, okay, Tim, you're, you're dumb. You're an idiot. You were wrong. 
Or maybe you're going to come back in five or ten years and say, hey, Tim, you were as right as you are handsome. <laughs>